All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at some questions on circular motion. So let's dive straight into it and look at the circular motion on a clock. So the first question wants us to calculate the angular speed of the second hand on the clock uh, if the length of it is 15 centimeters. So um, the first thing for a second hand, it takes 60 seconds to complete one full circle which means this time period is 60 seconds. Uh, we want the angular speed. Uh, so angular speed is 2 pi over t. So that's going to be 2 pi over 60, which gives us a angular speed of 0 0.10 radians per second. So this equation outputs in radians per second. Calculate the angular frequency of the minute hand. So for the minute hand, the time period is one hour. Well, not one hour, it's one. Yeah. So we've got this one here. So it takes a full hour to go one full rotation. So it's 3,600 seconds. Uh, Frequency is just 1 over the time period, so 1 over 3600, and then that's going to be equal to 2.8 times 10 to the minus 4 hertz. Alright, some, some fairly straightforward ones. So, calculate the velocity of the Earth around the Sun if the Earth's sun distance is 150 uh, million kilometers. So the 150 million kilometers is effectively the radius of the circular motion of the Earth around the Sun. Um, so the key thing here is actually going working out what the time period is. So the time period is one year. Which is uh, if we calculate that is 3.15 blah 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 times 10 to the 7 seconds. So that's how many seconds there are in a full year. Uh, so tangential velocity is the radius times the angular speed, which is the radius times by 2 pi over the time period there. So we've got... 1.50 times 10 to the 11 meters times 2 pi all over 3.15 blah 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 times 10 to 7. When we calculate that, what we get is 3.0 times 10 to the 4 meters per second or 30,000 uh, meters per second. So pretty speedy there. All right, so let's move on to the next question. So we're going to use the uh, velocity we've got here to calculate what the gravitational force is if it's in circular motion. So what you should know or be able to look up on your formula sheet is the force from circular motion is mv squared over r. So the mass of the Earth 10 to the 24, you might see it in your formula sheet is 5.99, it doesn't make any real difference, times by blah blah blah, times 10 to the 4 squared, all divided by 1.5 1. 1. blah blah blah, times 10 to the 11, which is the radius of the orbit. And if we put that all in, we end up with a number that is 3.6 times 10 to the 22 newtons. So a massive force. Again, both of the bodies involved are incredibly massive, so you'd expect a rather large force. Okay, so next question. Car going around a bend. Uh, so if we sketch what this looks like, so essentially we've got a bend sort of like this with your car essentially 
going like, round like this and this so this is like your center of the circle it tells you it's a 50 meter radius so it's like the this is a section of a circle and a 50 meter radius and we've got the velocity there so the force required to keep it in circular motion is m v squared over r which is going to be 600 times by 60,000 over 3,600 that's converting kilometers per hour into meters per second that's all squared and then divided by 50 gives us a total force of 3.3 blah, blah blah times 10 to the 3 newtons the car has four tires so the force is going to be that answer divided by four so 8.3 times 10 to the 2 newtons per tire because it will be shared out uh, between all four of the tires fairly equally Alrighty, so let's move on to the next question. Alright, so in this question we're going to look at a conical pendulum. So essentially what's happening is you, are hold, you would hold or you'd suspend the pendulum from this point at the top here. And what happens is the bob's going round in a horizontal circle. So essentially you'd sort of see it going round and round in this direction here. So if we like draw a few lines in effectively it's going in a circle with this radius here and it's sort of coming out of the page round and down back into the page in a horizontal circle okay so we have this radius is 24 centimeters the actual length is 50.4 and it takes 6.8 seconds to do 10 oscillations because remember when you're timing oscillations you typically time 10 oscillations so first of all the time period is going to be 6.8 divided by 10 so 0.68 seconds there that's going to be your time period so you can see from here if the circle is in a horizontal the horizontal component of the force is going to provide the centripetal force in this case so when it says calculate the horizontal component what is essentially looking for you to do is calculate the centripetal force uh, so we know from circular motion the centripetal force is m omega squared r so it's m 2 pi over t squared r so we've got the mass uh, it is at 0.1 kilograms uh, so we've got to do 2 times pi divided by 0.68 all squared times 0.1 times 0.24 that would give us your over four so it's 2.04 blah 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 so it's going to be uh, 2.0 newtons two two significant figures there because that's the force required to keep it in a horizontal uh essentially a horizontal circular motion so we want to find out what the tension is or the force so we know that f cosine of theta is equal to 2.04 blah, blah 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 and we know that cosine of theta is going to be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse oh, what am I? that's absolutely so cosine of theta sorry is equal to the opposite side so the adjacent side which if you look at it here will be the radius uh, over the hypotenuse which is the length of your string so that's going to be uh, 0.24 divided by 0.504 so we put those two together now we know what cosine of theta is so 2.04 divided by 0.24 divided by 0.504 put those two together and we get a tension or f or whatever you want to call it of it's 4.303 so it's going to be 4.3 newtons to 
two significant figures here. So then it wants us to calculate the tangential velocity of the bob. So tangential velocity is r omega, so it would be r 2 pi over t. Um, so we had a time period of uh, 0.68, so 2 pi divided by 0.68 times 0.24, that's the radius, gives us uh, 2.2 meters per second to two significant figures there. Alrighty, so let's move on to the final question. All right, so in this question, uh, we've got, uh, we're looking at a turntable. And what we're looking at is where on the turntable should we put a hundred gram mass in order to minimize the chance that, that will slip off the table. So if you think, if we uh, sort of try and show this in diagram, so if we put a mass at a certain distance from the centre of the turntable, the first thing to identify is that the centripetal force will be provided by the friction. So in order to move in circular motion, the friction must be equal to m omega squared. R. Now, if the friction is smaller than m omega squared r, what's going to happen is that the object will slide off the table because there's not sufficient force to keep it moving in a circle. So let's identify the things that are constant. So mass is constant. The angular speed of the turntable is just uh, fixed by how fast you spin the disc. So again, that's going to be a constant. So what you can see is that as you increase the distance from the center, what you need the frictional force to get bigger in order to keep it in circular motion. However, friction is going to have a fixed maximum value. You can, uh, some of you, if you're doing M1, will know that the friction is calculated by mu r. So these two not here are constant, so there's a fixed maximum friction. So we'll reach a radius where the friction is no longer big enough and it will slide off. So if you increase R, you'll go past that point. So the best place to put it would be at the center. Why? Because that makes R zero, which means you need friction to be equal to zero newtons to keep it at the center of the disc. Um, so that's where you'd put it, and the reason is it turns makes the radius zero, so it doesn't mass, you don't need any centripetal force, so it doesn't matter what the friction is. Um, just a word of warning here, a number of people when they were doing this were using the equation over R, and then getting thoroughly confused as to how Actually, this was saying as you increase R, that would mean the friction had to get lower. So the thing I'd caution you here is we could use this equation here because these two values here were constant. And so this changed this. In this equation, V is actually dependent on the radius, because remember V is R omega. Um, so you can't use this to directly explain this scenario because this is also changing as a function of radius as well. What we need is a lot of constants, so you can't use that equation there. All right, so let's have a look at the uh, final question here. So if the player rotates at 33 revolutions per minute and plays 44,100 bits of information per second, calculate the distance between bits at a radius of five centimeters. Okay, so let's first work out what the angular speed is uh, in radians per second. So 33 revolutions per minute is 33 over 60 revolutions per second times 2 pi would turn it into radians per second. So let's do that first. Three point four five five da, 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 radians per second is the 
angular, essentially the angular speed of your disk, the angular speed of, yeah, of the disk. Okay, so what we're going to try and do now is work out the number of radians per bit of information per bit of information because then once we've got that we can turn that into a distance so to get that what we're going to do is the radians per second divided by the bits per second is what that will end up cancelling so the seconds will end up cancelling out so you get radians per second on the top line bits per second on the bottom line and then we end up with radians per bit so when we do that uh, let's do, divide by 44,100 gives us 7.836 blah 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 times 10 to the minus 5 radians per radians per bit and we know that to get the a distance that we're essentially looking at an arc length so it's going to be the radius times uh, the essentially your radians per bit so that's going to be what this value here times by 0 0.05 gives you 3.9 times 10 to the minus 6 meters or 3.9 micrometers um, so just to like illustrate diagrammatically what we've done, when we're getting radians per bit, what we're essentially saying, if we've got a bit here and a bit here, what we've actually calculated when we've done radians per bit is this angle in here. So the angle between bits uh, is what we've done in this second stage here. And then in the third stage, what we've effectively done is we've used that angle to calculate the length of this arc by using the fact that the radius is five centimeters. So that's what we were doing there. Uh, the radians per bit is for calculating this angle in here. And then this section here is calculating this arc length at a distance of five centimeters. And we'd see if you went to a different radius, you'd get a different distance between bits there. Um, okay, so this is our final answer to this question. All right.